Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today in this episode of Dye Pop PS, we are going to dye a sock blank. In this dedicated dye steam pan that I don't use for food, I have four cups of water. I'm going to add three tablespoons of white vinegar. And then I already have my sock blank in here, which I did pre-soak in plain tap water, but um, you know, with no vinegar. And I did add it in saturated, so it came with some water in it as well. I'm now just gonna unfold it and sort of situate this blank into our pan. And today we are going to do a really fun project and it's something that I have never done before. Today we are going to dye this sock blank using some dry acid dye powder. I'm not necessarily going for speckles. We will get some speckles, but I'll probably shimmy it a bit. So, you know, we'll do a layer of color and then maybe add some more color on top of it. This is fairly low immersion right now. We have some sections like at these folds where the yarn is above the surface, but there's also definitely sections where um, we have some water. So if the dye hits that water first, it'll spread out a bit more, which I think will give us a lovely yarn with who knows how much white we'll have left. Whenever I am working with the dry dye powder, I will be wearing gloves, safety glasses, and either a respirator or a dust mask. When I'm wearing the respirator, my voice is extremely muffled. If it's a dust mask, it might only be slightly muffled. This is a double-stranded knit blank. So when you unravel this, you'll get two strands of sock yarn at a time, two complete 50 gram balls of yarn that you can use for identical socks, mittens, what have you. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the Knit Pick Sock Blank I have here, the steam can, or anything else I'm using today, you can find affiliate links in the video description. I'm going to reduce the heat now. And what I'm doing to today is a technique we've seen me do a lot of different times on the yarn. A little heavier, lighter application to get true speckles, a little bit heavier to get um, something a little more modeled. But my plan today is sort of to go at an angle and use three different colors. Of derma acid dyes, um, fluorescent safety orange, fluorescent fuchsia, and frozen. And so let's get started. I'm going to start with the fuchsia because that's our middle color. And I sort of want to lay out this pattern that I am going for. We'll see if I have enough dye. Um, but let's just start slowly creating some diagonal lines and colors are going to mix and in some places this pink will blend with the orange and the blue and that is a-okay um, but I'm just very slowly using my fingers and I get asked over and over why I don't use um, like a sieve or something and it's because I really like this tactile feel to it but I'm really liking how you know you see these dyes in the peaks and the valleys and I can always go in and add more color at a different time I sort of oh goodness I thought that I really thought that I was going to take this and um, do the second color right away but I might give this sort of a moment to let things sort of sit and get a chance to absorb where it's added, where I've done this pink so far, before going on to the other blue. Now, the advantage of that is that these areas where the pink is spreading out, that can absorb to the yarn. And when we layer the other colors on it, It'll be based on how those colors spread, but the colors will be mixing on the yarn versus in solution, which means we might see a little more, some more differences than we might notice otherwise. But now I'm gonna go wash my hands and then let's wait five minutes. It looks like there might still be a hint of pink, 
but a lot of the color has absorbed. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the next two colors because I feel like um, <laughs> I feel like we're set up pretty well to do that. And given the distance between them, we might mix a little bit, but I'm not super worried. I would like to take this opportunity to give some shout outs to the Chemnitz patrons, um, especially Ada Lai, Christina Doucette, and Karen Siegel. Thank you so much for your patronage and your support. And right now you should see the names of some of the Chemnitz patrons crossing the screen. Patreon is a platform that connects uh, fans with content creators that they really enjoy. And in exchange for supporting these content creators, you can get some really cool perks that include early access to new yarn dyeing videos, like this series of Dye Pot PS, um, early, uh, behind the scenes sneak peeks when I'm filming new episodes of Dye Pot Weekly, advanced notice of Kenneth's Creations shop restocks, and more. So if you'd like to learn more, you can find my Patreon link in the video description and the iCard, and you should really go check it out. Thank you so much, patrons. And now for our fluorescent safety orange, which hopefully I won't accidentally, whoops, uh, put onto um, the pink or the blue, and whoa, I did that a little heavy. I think that this one tends to read a tiny bit yellow. I haven't played with it a ton. I've only done a few little swatch tests so far, but I really like it. And I think in this light application, it is looking a lot more orange to me, where it was reading a bit more red in the time that I used it before. Come on. It's really liking to stick to my gloves right now. Let's see. So, um, there we go. Tiny bit more up there. <laughs> so of these colors, well clearly the pink is spread. That has been on there the longest. And our fluorescent orange is spreading out. The frozen is not as much. So I have a feeling that I might want to go back and add a little more of that blue on there. Now you can see that I did aliquot out some of these dyes, so I'm not going back and forth into the dye container. But, um, even so, I am washing and drying my hands in between. I am just going ahead and tapping this a bit, see if we're going to see some of that color, some of those blues spread a bit. Well, there we go. See, I don't mind some of these speckles, and I'm sure we'll see some white patches when it comes out. I just want some of the intensity of these blues to match a little of the intensity of the pink and orange that we see. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding on some dry dye, and then I'm going to just take my spoon, sort of fluffing it out and moving it a bit so it spreads a little more. So maybe it's just not quite as potent as our fluorescent friends, but maybe also it strikes a little faster. There's no question the fluorescent fuchsia spread a lot. And the same thing with the safety orange. I might grab a tiny bit more of our blue. There we go. Again, just sort of helping it give, you know, the speckles are definitely heavier in the blue area, but that's because I wanted more halo, if that makes any sense. But I'm really, really liking where this is all going, and I'm now going to keep the heat on low and let this sit for 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes and the water level it's looking a little low. So I'm going ahead and just adding a little bit of water. 
because I added maybe about a cup, cup and a half of water. But in doing that, I do see little bits of maybe frozen over here. But overall, me doing that has not really changed things very much at all. And in fact, it's really looking like most of the color, hmm, maybe there's a hint that's not in the yarn, but it's looking like most of the color is in the yarn. And now that we're starting to see some movement in the water, I'm gonna reduce the heat back to low. Let this sort of sit a little below a simmer in heat for another 10 minutes, and then we'll be back. 10 minutes later, yeah, maybe there's a hint of color. You can see like that, the tiniest hint of some pink maybe. Maybe we'll end up with some bleeding, who knows. Certainly I have now moved this a bit, but I'm now gonna turn off the heat completely, leave the blank in here to cool for a while, so then we can go wash it. Before I remove the blank, let's just take a closer look at it. Um, we can see here our orange section, which ooh, it looks great. There's definitely a lot of spread. Same with our fuchsia. You can see how few little speckled areas there are. With the blue, there's a lot more like speckles and heavily like specked areas. And you know, because it just didn't spread as far, and that was the way that we were able to accomplish that. Our blank is now cool. Our dye bath is clear, and now we can go wash it. Let's wash our fairly electric sock blank. I am really, really excited to unravel this, and so far so good. I think that the vibrancy of these three colors actually works really well together. I'm not gonna use a tiny bit of clear dish soap. Let's see if we have any color bleeding. Ooh, maybe we'll need to look at this under a black light too. That pink feels like, almost like it could glow. Looking pretty clear. So I am going to rinse this, make sure this is still popped into it, and hang up the blank to dry. Patrons, this blank is so cool. I didn't quite get the full-on diagonal I was going for, likely because of the way the blank was folded in the pan, but I love these three really, really bright colors. Um, I am really, really impressed by how much the um, fluorescent colors spread out from those speckles. Both the fluorescent orange and the fluorescent fuchsia um, really um, didn't strike completely fast. I mean, we do see some speckles on here, but there's also sort of this nice wash of a background color that I really enjoy. The color Frozen struck a lot faster, maybe because it's less pigmented overall or something about it just struck faster. Um, I did have to add some more and sort of try to dissolve it a bit uh, so that way we could get that wash of blue on the background. Ultimately, it's not as fluorescent, well, not that it is fluorescent at all, um, as the other two colors, but I think that the three work together really, really well. We got some really nice color penetration on the wrong side of the blank. There's even a hint more purple. Check this out under a black light. Look at the way that that orange and then the pink just glow. And really, the, the blue is not, because it's also not fluorescent, but um, really you can see how they brightly stand out, um, even with just a tiny bit of the black light hitting them. And so that's just so cool. I am now going to go unravel this blank onto my automated skein winder. This doesn't give us quite a sense of the color progression as when I unravel skeins by hand, but I think that we'll still be able to get a sense of what this gradient yarn is gonna look like. Unraveled, you can see that we still have these really, really bright tones in this yarn, but I don't think you can necessarily appreciate 
that it's not a smooth transition gradient. The sections of blue, pink, and orange are separated by some variegated sections where you have both patches of the bright blue and bright pink, or of the bright pink and the bright orange. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at a sock like Unraveled. I do need to go wet the yarn to relax the twist, but by sort of stretching it out, you can get a better sense of what this yarn is like. You can see that we have overall a very pigmented yarn, but there are some really deep speckles of the pink, orange, and blue um, on their background colors, um, which I just think is a lot of fun. Chemnitz patrons, thank you so much for voting for oh. me to dye some sock blanks with dry acid dye powder. I had not tried this technique before and I absolutely love how it turned out. I think that results could vary a bit depending on the colors that we select to use as dry powder, but I know that I definitely want to explore this a lot more in the future. If you're not currently a Chemnitz patron and you want to learn more, you can find links in the video description and iCard. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I would like to thank all of you patrons, fans, new viewers for watching and hanging out as I play around with adding color to yarn and trying new to me techniques for the very first time. I hope that you enjoy these experiments as much as I do, and I know that I'm looking forward to what we're going to create next. Make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and toggle that bell icon so you get notifications whenever I release a new video or a live stream. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. You didn't really think I'd say goodbye without looking at our awesome yarn under a black light one more time. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.